Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today I want to show you how you can both get and also use Cisco's WebEx meetings. If this is your first time using WebEx meetings, I'm going to walk you through step by step how you can start taking advantage of it. First off, what is WebEx meetings? It's a video conferencing solution that allows you to both talk and see others. It works whether you're meeting with one other or even thousands of others. You can also share your screen and content with others. So let's say you have a PowerPoint presentation, you can very easily share it with your audience. If someone in your audience is unable to make it, you can also record the session for them to access after the fact. WebEx Meetings works regardless of what type of PC you have. If you're on Windows, Mac, or Linux, you'll be able to use it. You can also use it on the go, whether you have an iPhone or an Android phone. There's a lot of competition in the space. You might have heard of Microsoft Teams or Zoom video conferencing. WebEx Meetings is one of the leaders in the space and they offer an extremely feature rich video conferencing solution. And best of all, it's backed by the security and privacy of a large company like Cisco. If there's a section of this video that interests you more, feel free to use the chapters down below to simply jump ahead to it. Otherwise, we're gonna kick off with how you can get WebEx meetings. Here I am on my PC, and first off, I wanna show you how you can get WebEx meetings. Open up your web browser and head to the website webex.com. If you don't yet have a WebEx account, it's entirely free to sign up. On the WebEx homepage, click on the button here that says sign up now, it's free. When you click on sign up, all you need is to enter an email address. It truly is free. You don't have to enter any payment information. You might be wondering, well, what's the limitation of a free account? Free accounts are limited to 50 minutes of meeting time. If you don't want to deal with any limitations on the homepage of WebEx, you can click on plans and pricing. And there are a variety of plans that give more meeting time and they have many other additional features and functionality. And you can evaluate which one is the best for you. If you already have a WebEx meetings account, maybe it's because your work or your school provides you with an account, up on the top right hand corner, you could click on the sign in text. When you click on sign in, you have two different options. You could either sign into WebEx meetings, which is the video conferencing solution, or you could sign into WebEx Teams. Teams is a collaborative space for teams to come together and work together. Today, we're looking at WebEx meetings, so I'm gonna sign in to meetings. Once you click on sign in, you'll be prompted to type in your email address. Type in the email address that you have an account for. Next, you'll be prompted to enter your password in. Go ahead and enter your password. Once you're done entering your password, click on next. We're now logged in to the authenticated page for WebEx meetings and we're making some good progress and we're pretty close to either joining a meeting or hosting a meeting. I wanna walk through what some of the functionality is here and what you can do with WebEx meetings. At the very top of the page, you can join a meeting by typing in a meeting code. If let's say a host provided you with a meeting code, you'll have it, you could paste it in here and then join a meeting. If you are a host and you wanna figure out how to get a meeting code, hold on and I'll get to it in just a moment. Right under there, there is a section here called Kevin Stratford's personal room. Every WebEx meetings account has its own personal room. The way to think of this is this is a place you can come together and meet with others for impromptu meetings. When I click over here on this copy icon, this will copy details of the meeting and then I can send this to others to join my impromptu meeting. For instance, I could send an email, maybe a text message or a messenger message. However, I wanna communicate with others, I can send them my meeting room information. Here, for instance, I have an email message open and I'm gonna paste in the content that I just copied. You'll see here that there's a hyperlink for the meeting. If I send this email off to others, they'll be able to click on this and that'll allow them to join my meeting. Over on the right hand side, you see a number. This is the meeting number. So if you type that meeting number in this section here, you'll be able to join the meeting. 
Along with that, you'll see an ellipses right here under my personal room. If I click on this, here too, you'll see the meeting number appear. If you want someone to be able to join the meeting, you can also share this number with them and you'll enter that number in this field here and that'll also allow someone to join your meeting. Let's say that you shared this information with someone else and now you just want to kick off the meeting with them. Well, it's pretty simple to do. All you need to do is click on the start a meeting button and this will drop you in the meeting. If you click on this drop down, you can choose whether you want to use the desktop app or whether you want to use the web app. By default, it goes to the desktop app and I recommend that experience. And in a moment, I'll show you how you can get the desktop app. Not all meetings are going to be impromptu meetings. Meetings, you might want to schedule a meeting ahead of time. To schedule a meeting, there's a button right here that says schedule. Let's click on that to see how it works. This opens up the schedule a meeting interface and I can now add all of the details for my meeting. In the first dropdown, I can choose the meeting type and there are only two types for me. I can either go with a standard meeting or I could go with end-to-end -end encryption for the voice if I want a little bit of extra security. I'm going to leave it set on the default. Up here, I can type in the meeting topic or the subject of the meeting. I'm going to type something in here. I typed in Kevin Cookie Company brainstorming session. I want to come together with some of my coworkers and we'll figure out some great ideas for our company. Down below, there's a meeting password associated with the meeting and this was just auto-generated. Down below, this is where I can set the date and time of my meeting. If I click on this, I could choose the day, the time, and also the duration. Now, if you have a free account, the meeting will be limited to 50 minutes. With a paid account, you can set a meeting up to 24 hours. I hope none of you are going to meet for that long because that'd be a really long meeting, but you do have that functionality and you're able to do that. Down below, I can set this as a recurring meeting. So let's say I wanna to come together with this brainstorming session and we wanna meet weekly. I can click on recurrence and I could choose how frequently it should reoccur. For now, I'm gonna go with a one-off meeting and we'll see how effective this meeting is. Underneath, this is where I can start adding other people to my meeting. To have a meeting, you want others to join, so this is where you should enter some email addresses in. I'm gonna type in a few names and invite some others to my meeting. Once you're satisfied with all of the different settings, you can click on schedule and that'll schedule the meeting on your calendar. I've now finished scheduling the meeting and here I can review all of the details of my meeting that I scheduled. If I click on this green button here, this will allow me to join the meeting and I also see all of the meeting information down below. Here again, I see the meeting number that I can provide my attendees to be able to join my meeting. Up above, I can copy all of the meeting details to invite others. I can also go back and maybe I made a mistake somewhere, maybe I wanna reschedule and choose a new time. I can edit the meeting invitation. I can also cancel the meeting. And lastly, I can add it to my calendar. Let's say that I'm using Outlook. I can put it on my Outlook calendar. Now that we've scheduled a meeting, this is Kevstrat3's email that he received. And here you can see that it's a meeting invitation and I can accept it and add it to my calendar in Microsoft Outlook. Within the meeting invitation itself, here I see the meeting invitation, I see the meeting number, and here too as an attendee, I can simply click on join meeting and this will add me to the WebEx meeting. It's extremely simple and easy to get other people to join your meeting and if you're an attendee it couldn't be any easier to join a meeting back here in the meeting details if I click on back to meeting list or I could click over on meetings on the left hand side this will show me all of my upcoming meetings here I could see that I have two meetings coming up and they're both brainstorming sessions for the Kevin cookie company and here too I could very easily click on start to join a meeting we're gonna join the meeting in just a moment, but before we do that, I wanted to show one additional thing first. Over on the left-hand side, if we click on downloads, this will show a number of different downloads that we can get for WebEx meetings. The first one is one that I would highly recommend. This is the Cisco WebEx desktop app. The desktop app gives you the full functionality of WebEx meetings, especially if you're gonna be hosting a meeting or sharing content, I'd recommend getting the desktop app. There's one item called the productivity tools and by installing this, this will allow 
allow you to schedule meetings directly from Microsoft Outlook so you don't have to come to this interface here to be able to schedule a meeting. We have now scheduled a meeting, we have the desktop app, why don't we jump into a meeting and see what the capabilities are. I'm in the meetings view here and I see my two upcoming meetings. I'm gonna join the first brainstorming session and let's click on the start button. This kicks off the meeting and I now have two options. I can open the desktop app because I've installed that. If I want to use the desktop app all the time, I can check this box and then click on open WebEx meeting and it'll by default always use the desktop app. If however you chose not to install the desktop app or you just want to use it in your web browser, you can also click on this text down below that says join from your browser. I'm going to use the desktop app since that's where all of the functionality is so I'm going to click right here. All right, look at this. This launches up the preview interface for WebEx meetings. This allows me to configure both my audio and my video before joining a meeting. How many meetings have you joined where someone comes in and their audio is not working properly or they don't yet have their video on? This allows us to make sure everything is in working order. Let's see what we could do here. In the bottom left hand corner, you'll see a button that says mute. With this, you could turn your microphone on or off. Let's say that you're joining a session that's already in progress. You probably want to mute your microphone before joining. Over on the right hand side of the mute button, if we click on this caret icon, this will allow us to choose what speaker we want to use and what microphone we want to use. Especially if you have a number of microphones or a number of speakers, you likely want to configure which one you prefer to listen and also speak through. Over in the center, I also have the option to stop my video or I could restart my video. If I click on the carrot here too, especially if you have a number of cameras hooked up to your computer, you can define which camera you want to use. Now, one other fun thing that I wanna show, up in the top right hand corner, you can change your background. So if I click on this, this is what's referred to as a virtual background. I can set a blurry background, and so that kind of blurs out the background a little bit. I could also choose other picture backgrounds. So this is an executive office. Look at this, I'm truly a baller now. I've got a nice, it looks like I'm probably on the 50th or 60th, 60th floor of some building, but this is a, I don't know, maybe I need to upgrade my office a little more, but this looks pretty good. Additionally, you can also upload your own photo. So let's say that you wanna be on the Starship Enterprise or you wanna be in an underwater hotel, wherever you wanna be, you can click on this plus button to add your very own background image. I'm gonna stick with this executive background. I think this is kind of a fun one. Let's go with this and uh, once we're all done with these different settings, you can test out your speaker and your microphone to make sure that everything's working properly, especially if you're just starting out with WebEx meetings. I'd recommend doing that. All right, so we are set now to join the meeting. Let me click on start meeting. I'm now in a meeting and it turns out that Nestor has already joined the meeting. By default, I see the participant list right up here on the right and here I can see Nestor. I wanna briefly walk through what we can do when we've joined a meeting. Down in the bottom, we're gonna start over in the bottom left-hand corner. And just like on the previous screen, I have the same control that allows me to either mute or unmute myself. And once again, I could choose what microphone or what speakers I wanna use. The same with the video as well. I could turn my video on or off, depending on whether I want people to see me. Maybe I had a rough night and I don't want people to see me on the video. Well, I turn off the video. Then this is one of the most valuable things about WebEx meetings. I can share content with others. Let's click on this to see what we can do. This opens up the share content dialog and I can share all sorts of things. I can share my entire screen or I could share a specific window on my computer. So whether it's, let's say, a OneNote or a PowerPoint presentation, I could go through and choose the appropriate content. Down at the bottom, I could also share a file. I could open an application and share that, or I could open up a new whiteboard. Why don't we just test this out, and first off, I'll start by sharing my screen. Now, one thing to note before we do that, you'll also see that there's this dropdown at the top. By default, it's set to optimize text and images. So if you're sharing things like a document, a spreadsheet, 
a PowerPoint presentation, you likely want to choose this one. This will ensure the best quality for things that aren't fast moving. If let's say you're going to share maybe a YouTube video, maybe my channel, whatever type of fast moving or video type content you want to share, choose this. The quality will be a little lower, but it'll optimize for video or fast moving content. I'm going to select just text and images for now and I'm going to share my screen. This now shares my desktop. If I go up to the top here, I see text that says you're sharing your screen. If I click on this drop down, I'll be able to see what all of my attendees can see. That's a pretty nice feature. A lot of times people say, hey, can you see what I'm sharing? This way you know exactly what others can see. Up at the top, if I hover over again, I have all of these different controls available to me. For instance, let's say I need to do something quickly and I don't want my attendees to see it, I can pause my screen sharing and then I can do what I need to do and then resume the screen sharing. Here, if I click on share, I can share other types of content. So let's say for instance, I was sharing a window and now I want to share a different window. I can easily toggle between different types of content that I'm sharing. Here I could assign other people to take over the sharing session. Once again, I can mute, unmute, start or stop my video. And here too, I could also kick off a recording. Now, one thing that I really love about screen sharing is you can also annotate your screen. It's built in directly to WebEx meetings. If I click on annotate, this opens up a whole bunch of annotation controls on the side of my screen. And so I could draw on my screen, I could type on my screen, I could insert shapes on my screen. I have all of these different tools. I can save the annotation and once I'm all done, I can close the annotation. I'm back in the main interface and I want to show you one more awesome type of content that you can share. And for that, let's go back to share content. And at the very bottom here, we can also share a whiteboard. Let's click on this. I'm now in a blank whiteboard and just like the name implies, I can doodle and I could add information to this whiteboard. So I could add lines, I could I could scribble around and other attendees can also do that as well. So we could have a collaborative session, especially for a brainstorming session. And this is very valuable. I'm now back in the main interface and down at the very bottom, I can also record this meeting. When I click on record, it'll allow me to record it as an MP4 on my desktop. If you're part of one of the more advanced plans, you also have the option to save directly to the cloud. So you don't have to leave it on your computer. The choice is yours. Over next to the record button, I also have some additional options. One of the interesting ones is I can lock the meeting. So let's say I'm a teacher and we have a start time of 9 a.m. If you're not there at 9 a.m., I'm going to lock the door so you can't join anymore. So you can do all sorts of things. Let's say that you want to bring someone in and the meeting's already started. You can invite or even remind people. And here again, they make it very easy to get the meeting link. So even once the meeting has started, you can still send it out to people to get them to join your meeting. Now over on the right hand side, you can see all of my participants. This is a fairly small meeting. I just have Nestor meeting with me, but it was nice of Nestor to join because I wanted to demonstrate some of the functionality that I have. If I hover over Nestor, I can right click on him and I have all sorts of different options. I can mute, I can unmute. I can also chat with Nestor. I can move him to the lobby if I want to boot him out for a moment. And this one's very interesting and maybe something that teachers will use if students are disruptive but you can expel someone from the WebEx meeting. Now that really does sound like an education term where you're going to expel a student, but you could boot someone out if you're the host and you no longer want them contributing. Now one thing that's interesting as well is down in the bottom right hand corner, you can chat. And when I click on chat, here I could type in whatever message I want. So I'll say, hello everyone. Not only can I talk to everyone, but in this drop down list, I can also choose specific individuals to chat with. So let's say maybe someone's being disruptive or maybe I want to follow up with someone within the session. I can chat with just one other person and have a one on one conversation. Along with being able to chat with others, I also have control over what this real estate up here looks like. If I move my mouse up here, currently it's in a grid view where I'll see all the different attendees within a grid. If I click here, I can also change it to the active speaker. Now everyone's currently muted, so the active speaker is showing up as Nestor, but I can have the active speaker show up within this real estate. So I can configure what this display looks like and what content I'm focused on. 
This shows you all of the fundamentals of WebEx meetings. Like I said in the intro, it's an extremely feature rich product. In fact, if you go to these top menus across the top, there are many different settings that you can set. But what I wanted to do is show you the fundamentals to help you get started. Now, once you're all done with your meeting and you want to exit, there's a big red button in the bottom that allows you to either end or leave the meeting. I want to briefly talk about what the difference is between those two different options. If I click on end meeting, this will end it for all of the different participants. Now let's say I'm hosting a meeting, but I need to leave early, but I want the discussion to continue. In that case, I can click on leave meeting and I'll leave, but the session will continue. So I have those two different options. For now though, I'm going to click on end meeting. All right, well, that was a quick look at how you can use WebEx meetings. If this video helped you, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see future videos like this, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get a notification anytime new content like this comes out. And lastly, if you want to see me cover any other videos in the future, leave a comment down below and I'll add it to my list of videos to create. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you next time. Bye.